Welcome back. I hope dinner was lovely. And now for the good part, right? Get to find out what you've been wondering. Who's gonna win the National Book Award for 2016? Um, our fabulous host, Larry Wilmore, earlier said that it's a tough time. And we've all been dealing with the political situation in this country. But then Toy Derricote also said that joy is an act of resistance. And so I'd say that putting on our dresses and our tuxedos and being together and celebrating literature is in fact an act of resistance. A reminder that we can repair our country and our world and we can be together and we can still feel joy and happiness. So, I'm brand new. This is my first year as executive director of the National Book Foundation. And I'm super nervous. Um, this is my first time on this stage. I'm unlikely to write a novel or a biography. And so it might not be ever for any other reason other than to welcome you guys all here. Um, but looking out at all of you bright lights in this room reminds me that this role is a profound honor, a tremendous responsibility, and truly a dream come true. It's my dream job. I'm a reader, a capital R reader, and the practice of reading books, talking about books, learning from them, loving them, has brought more joy and more empathy and more magic into my life than I can ever really truly express. And I believe really deeply, really truly deeply that this work matters. I am a black woman, obviously, um, but I am the first woman and the first person of color to serve in this role. And that's a source of pride for me. It's also a source of inspiration. And I'm reminded every day that as a black woman, it's my job to keep making sure that there are more seats at an ever expanding table. One that includes anyone with the capacity for wonder, with curiosity and with passion, which is to say, everyone, no matter what they look like or where they come from or who they love. Um, being up here in general is a really emotional moment for me and especially so in this time where many of us in this room and in this nation find ourselves disoriented, disconnected, and unclear about what's to come. So tonight, at the 67th National Book Awards, let us remember that books give us hope, that they give us comfort, that they light our way, that they instruct us, and that they bring us together. That the simple act of reading creates community where each and every one of us will always be welcome. And together, we can work to make that community of readers bigger and stronger and more powerful. And so my hope, my deepest hope, is that every single person in this room will join the foundation in making a commitment to doing so tonight. So before I continue to go on and on and blow way past my time limit, which I have so gently told everybody not to, uh, I'd like to give some thanks. And I have a lot of thanks to give. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much to our wonderful host, Larry Wilmore. It is a pleasure and a privilege to have you here. You're super funny. Uh, thank you, as David said earlier, to our generous sponsors. Without you, we would literally not be here. Uh, thank you to Apple and to iBooks for hosting tonight's party. Um, Stick around, there's gonna be a really big disco ball, which looks pretty much like my dress. Um, and we're grateful to each and every one of our partners who help us to run our programs, because we are more than just an award. We work year round to bring readers into the fold, and we're grateful to everybody who helps us to do that through our Book Up program, 
through our program Eat, Drink, and Be Literary at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, through our MBA on Campus program, which brings finalists and winners to campuses around the country, to five under 35, some of our authors are here. And I'd also like to thank, first off for my job, but in general for being incredible, the National Book Foundation's Board of Directors. The Board of Directors of the National Book Foundation terrified me when I first met them all. I didn't think I would make it through my first meeting, but despite how intimidating they might seem on paper, in real life they are warm and loving and passionate and smart, and they care so much about this work. It is an absolute joy to have such backing and to have so much warmth and care dumped into this organization that we work to keep alive every single day. Um, and in particular, I'd like to call out David Steinberger, who, who has been a mentor, who has tolerated my phone calls every single Tuesday morning for the past nine months. Um, and who cares so much, but not only cares, but also believes that we can do more, be more, and grow to be an organization that has a profound impact on the way that we read in America. I'd also like to thank my predecessor, Harold Augenbrom. I promised him that I'd embarrass him with my love from the stage. A baton has never been passed so warmly. He has taken every single phone call, every single panic attack. He has built this organization. He has made this work possible. Most of the things that you're seeing tonight are things that Harold thought of. There are to-do lists on a 278 National Book Award task list. And he's just an amazing man. He's working at the foundation again on his translation project with the Mellon Foundation. And man, I'll never forget Harold so long as I live on this earth because the gift that he's given me this beautiful transition into an organization that has the opportunity to flourish has been tremendous. So thank you, Harold. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Next up is the staff at the National Book Foundation. They are our everything. So shout out to Courtney Gillette, to Ben Samuel, to Laura Donovan, to Meredith Andrews, to Sherry Young, to Jordan Smith, and to Jonathan Walsh. We are small but mighty, and I'm proud of you all. And now for our judges, who read a combined total of 1,464 books to identify the 20 finalist titles and the 22 finalists that you will see tonight. Thank you for enduring and for building strong relationships with your UPS person. <laughs> so where would we be tonight without all of the remarkable and talented writers in this room? Our finalists, thank you for your work and your spirit and your vision. It helps us to better understand who we are where we come from and where we might hope to go. You help us to dream and to understand. I used a quote when I interviewed for this job and it feels really relevant. It feels really inspiring now to me in this moment. And so Ralph Ellison, a 1953 National Book Award winner once said, literature is integrated. And I'm not just talking about color or race. I'm talking about the power of literature to make us recognize, and again and again, the wholeness of the human experience. And so why are we here tonight? Why did we bother when this world is such a disaster to get this gussied up in our gowns and our tuxedos? And I see you if you didn't wear one. What are we to do? Aren't there more important matters to attend to? But no. It's about trying to seek out what the wholeness of the human experience is. 
Our mission at the National Book Foundation is to celebrate the best of American literature and to expand its audience and to enhance the cultural value of great writing in America. We need books right now more than we ever have. We need our writers more than we ever have. We need thoughtful critique. We need stories and poems and novels and graphic memoirs and essays and thoughtful prose. And we need them to inspire us and to recognize us and to affirm our place in the world. We need literary activists of all kinds who are going to help every kind of reader find and share in the beauty and power of books. But more than anything, we need to reach readers, new readers and the already initiated, young and adult, immigrant and citizen of every religion, race, and politics. Because I believe now more than ever we need to come together, we need to understand who we can be, how much there is to achieve yet, and how far that we can go. And there is no better way to start the conversations that we need to have than by reading and connecting through the books that we are celebrating here tonight. The 20 books that we are celebrating here tonight start us. And so I hope that you will join me, not just tonight, but throughout the year in this mission to change the world, one book at a time. I ask you to believe in us, to believe in this foundation, to believe in these books, and to support us, and to help us turn that belief into action. May the bright spirit of tonight's celebration shine through the days and the weeks and the years to come. May this literature last forever. We have so much to celebrate and so much to read. And so let's take comfort tonight in each other. And then let's get this party started. And then tomorrow, let's get to work. <laughs>